Population dynamics. Monarch butterflies migrate many miles and people have monitored their numbers in certain special places like in Morelia in Mexico where millions of butterflies overwinter. They, from year to year, the numbers fluctuate. They decline and then they increase. So what is it that causes these cycles? Some people might say the monarchs are declining because forests are disappearing, and certainly that's a factor. But even with constant habitat available, populations may fluctuate, and many species have regular population fluctuations. These are caused by high birth rates when population size is low, and when density gets high, that the death rate is high. This can cause the population to go over the carrying capacity, the equilibrium number, and this causes cyclic population fluctuations as the population size goes above and below and above and below and gets closer to the carrying capacity. When sheep were first brought to Australia, their numbers increased fairly steadily up to the carrying capacity, after which time the numbers were fairly stable, but probably they went above a little bit and below till they got there. Some of the most interesting data we have are from long-term monitoring of lynx and hare populations. The lynx is the main predator of the hare, snowshoe hare, and the Hare are the main food of the lynx. These records came from the Hudson Bay Company, where they had records of what fur trappers caught in their traps. So in northern Canada, there were data from 1850 till the early 1900s. And we can see that the numbers went up and down a thousand times in these records. So here is a graph of those data with on the y-axis on the left the thousands of hares and on the right thousands of lynx, note the different scale, and time across the bottom on the x-axis. The dark blue line, the numbers of the hare or the prey, the red line, the numbers of the lynx. So I'd like you to look at this graph and then tell me, tell yourself in your own words what's happening here. For any living thing, it's not an easy life in the real world. There are limits to resources available and enemies around every turn. So many more individuals are born than are recruited to the population, that is, those that actually become established with the potential of reproducing themselves. For every plant and animal, there can be mortality at every step of the way. For microscopic uh, photosynthetic algae, phytoplankton, their populations fluctuate dramatically just through the course of a year. And this is probably fed by the overturning of the lake in the spring and the fall, making more nutrients, letting the populations grow. And then when thermal stratification stills the growth, the population numbers fall. Similar species don't always do the same thing. If we look at some moths that feed on the same kind of vegetation in a German forest, they don't do the same thing at all. Whereas looking at data from small mammals in Finland, we see synchronization across species. Let's look at those pictures. Here's the data of small mammals in Finland, voles and lemmings and mice. And over the course of 25 years or so, each, as, um, let's see, the most common is Clythrionomys rufocanus, pictured in the graph, 
As those numbers increase, so do numbers of all the other species. But look at the graphs for these moths. Clearly it's different strokes for different moths, perhaps because of their life histories differing and also the cycles of their predators. Here's an example from my part of the country, from Michigan, where north of the northern peninsula, there's a lake called Lake Superior with an island in that lake called Isle Royale. And it's in a national park, Isle Royale National Park. They're the uh, most gorgeous predator prey system is that of moose, the large herbivorous prey, and wolves. And here's a picture of wolf in the winter, wolves in the winter, take photos taken from a plane, and here's a moose in the summer chewing on some aquatic vegetation. So there's evidence that both the moose and the wolves found their way to Isle Royale within the last hundred years. And they've been the object of long-term study by rangers, natural historians since that time. Isle Royale is really beautiful and it's remote, it's hard to get there. Hikers love to go there but you have to pack in special equipment to filter the water and you know there's no vehicles but there are more hikers coming every year. Here are some data from 1955 to 2005 on wolf numbers on the left axis and moose numbers on the right axis showing that same kind of pattern that we saw with the lynx and the hare as um, prey numbers increase an increase in prey is followed by an increase in predators which then causes a decrease in prey and then a de decrease in predators, which then allows the prey to build up again. But look what happened in this period between, well, in around 1990, a time when predator numbers should have been increasing, they decreased instead. Why might this have happened? We'll talk about this in class. We can see that fluctuations in the environment occur randomly, that, that is in addition to the annual seasonal fluctuations, but we can look at changes in tree ring width to give an indication of the goodness or badness of a year that is a function of temperature and precipitation. And if we look at the frequency of the intervals between the peaks in width, and compare them to random numbers, they're not significantly different. Populations of living things, however, cycle non-randomly, and the frequencies of intervals between the population peaks in the population of this red fox are distributed non-randomly. You can see that they're different than the, the blue bars are different than the red bars, which are random numbers.